Hello, everybody. This is Noah and John, and we are from Urban Digs, and it is Friday. So you're going to get your weekly Manhattan market update. John, let's get right to it. I'm looking at Manhattan supply. Came in at 65.63. Show me that chart. That is the number, Noah, and it's down, what, maybe a half a percent? You know, supply really hasn't picked a direction here. I want to say it's trending down, but it popped up a little bit. I mean, I think the safe bet is to say supply is going sideways. Yeah, I mean, it had a bump. It had a bump off the bottom, and that's really all it was. It was like a rebound, a sharp little rebound off the bottom, I guess, with September and early October heavy list, uh, listing season. And then it's kind of like topping out and going sideways a little bit. I mean, I kind of thought we were at 9,600, John, last year. 9,600 yeah. last I thought that we would at least kind of try to break the 7,000 level this listing season, and buyers would see more options going on um, with that market pulse falling. But that's not the case, Johnny. So we'll see what happens. We'll see if more stuff's coming on. We'll check that out in a second. Let's move on to Manhattan demand, pending sales, 4,300. Johnny, show me that chart. Yeah, so that's down nearly 3% from the week before. And, you know, honestly, what's the story with pending sales? You know, it, it feels no, it feels like one of those helium balloons you had on a birthday party and it was stuck to the ceiling all day. And you come in the next day, it's a little bit lower, a little bit lower, a little bit lower every day you come in. So that, that's what pending <laughs> sales is doing. It's just drifting slowly lower. It's deflating. You know, I think... I have a theory on this, John. I, I think pending sales is now reacting to the insanity, the stratospheric insanity of contract activity that we went through for three, four months over the spring and early summer. And that was not sustainable. That was not normal. It was lovely. I enjoyed every second of it. But um, that's what's going on right here. And even though the weeklies are showing a tick up in contract activity, which we'll get to in a second, that's only a one week trend. Pending sales is a six month bucket of sales right in contract so that's going to take more than just a weekly trend of upticks to move that trend i would not be surprised if that continues lower until we get back into like the historical normal channel and i don't know where that is it might be the low fours or the high threes john yeah exactly you're exactly right no we're basically renormalizing after going from nothing to something overnight and we're just coming back to sort of the the reversion to the mean essentially but where the question is where's that yes. going to be and that's why the market pulse keeps falling, guys, is because pending sales is now kind of falling faster than supply. That's what's going on. Let's take a look at those weeklies, maybe to add some clues to what we're saying. I'm looking at supply. 410 things came on the market in Manhattan last week. Johnny, show me that chart. Yeah, it is down a bit. That's almost 8%. And you know, weeklies, unlike overall supply, have been decreasing on a pretty weekly basis, as it yeah. would happen. Uh, really, since Labor Day, it's like every week is a little bit less. I mean, there's one tick up. But generally speaking, the weekly levels of supply of inventory uh, coming on the market is decreasing. It's decreasing, John, but it's it's kind of decreasing more to the historical average now. Like, I mean, I think a month ago, it was just we had a huge pop. We had a heavy listing season. There was a lot of stuff that came on. And since that big pop, it's just been slowly kind of stair-stepping its way back down, exactly how you say. So it's really interesting. We're going back to the norms right now. That heavy listing season is fading, and that's why supply is not going up, and that's why the market pulse is going down. It's all starting to make sense now, Johnny. Let's take a look at contract signed, 327 things. That's still good. Johnny, show me that chart. It is good. That's up 4% roughly from the week before. And you know, contract signs on a weekly level, but they're ramping up. We've had two weeks now, over 300. Yes. And uh, this is starting to shape up the edge of this chart here. That right edge kind of looks like what you would not expect to see sort of toward the end of March. Just a solid increase every week in contract signs. Now, we, are, we still have a yes. few weeks before Thanksgiving. So this number could kind of go either way. But um, it's interesting to watch here. Yeah, and I think to give perspective, I mean, during during the spring and summer insanity that we talked about earlier, I think we hit over 400 on a weekly basis, and that was consistently over 400 on a weekly basis. We were sitting here saying, oh, my God. Um, so that's kind of your benchmark of where we need to go to get back to that environment. We're not there yet. It's going to take a lot more oomph to get there, but we're keeping track of it, Johnny. Yep. So let's keep this thing going. I'm looking at the charts du jour for today, Johnny. We're going to take an update on Manhattan negotiability at the time of contract signing. That's the way to do it. We got two values here. We're looking at the listing discount from the original ask. What is that negotiation? And then the listing discount from the last ask, Johnny. When you look at that chart, what are you saying? Well, just to, just to jump right to the point, I would say that this chart makes me think that this market has already peaked. I mean, we, we've seen the low discounts and now they're starting to rise again. So that to me tells me that demand is a little bit softer. Supply is a little bit stronger. So you're starting to get the, the, the buyers have a little bit of window here. It's, I mean, it's not much. The biggest the sellers are still yeah. getting what ninety four point four percent of their ask. So, you know, yeah, it's still a sellers, still a sellers market, but it's softening. 
Yeah, I, I think I think exactly. I think the peak of the market now that we're looking at it in hindsight is quite clear. I think all of the real time data that we've been showing you has been quite clear. Everything is kind of fit in the mold. The pieces of the story are coming together. The picture's there. Um, I don't know if all the sellers are hearing it, Johnny. I, I hope the brokers are conveying all this, but you're exactly right. Um, this was the, the discount leverage, the window that we're talking about. I don't, I don't know where this goes. I, I don't see this going up here, guys, if that's what you're expecting. This is either going to probably go sideways or it's going to just go back down a little bit is my guess. I guess we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. But my big question, John, is um, this is great to see everything, but like, what does it look like when we break it down? You know, mm -hmm. so let's take a look at this broken down. Here is what this looks like broken down by price point. Try to look at the colors up here. We got the blue and the red under 2 million and 1 million, respectively. And then we got the yellow at two to four, and we got the green at 4 million plus. And Johnny, what do you see here? Well, I mean, it really, this chart sort of mirrors what we just saw a second ago, except the only thing that really jumps out to me is that two to $4 million discount in August. Now, we don't have September because when you slice yeah. the out thinly, it gets a little choppy for last month. But you know, look at that increase in the, the August discount for the two to four million. That's that's clearly a bit of a slowdown um, in that one sector, which was sort of late to the party to begin with, and looks like it might be leaving the party a little earlier. Yeah, it's really it, exactly. And when I look over here in May and June and July, it looks like all three of those were kind of coupled together, and now it's just kind of decoupling a little bit. That's certainly something that stands out. And of course, as you said, the general trend that we're talking about is standing out. Um, I think the May-June period of, of the peak is stay, standing out. And again, I just want to point out, guys, oh, my God. Let's just let's always remember when something like this happens with our market, we got a message just to our clients because look at that opportunity. Look at that discounted opportunity you could have gotten last year. If, you, if your buyers were brave enough to go into those waters and see what's going on. Um, thank you very much, John, for whipping all these charts up. These are great. That is John Walkup. I am Noah Rosenblatt. We are both of Urban Digs. And don't forget, guys, if you got questions, we got answers. Just look at our forum down here. If you want any of the charts that we discussed in this video, you could just download those charts using these buttons over here. And this has been your weekly Manhattan market update. And we'll catch you next time.